So we're going to skip the microscale winds, quite frankly, because they're very unpredictable. But oftentimes you will have these microscale winds going on um, in, within these mesoscale winds, and these local mesoscale winds are going on within these kind of these larger macro scale winds. So focusing on what we call kind of these local or middle scale mesoscale winds. And you see a list here of the different local winds that I want to talk about. Um, and one of the things about, um, I'll give you a little secret here, it's not really a secret, but if you want to know, for instance, we have um, two winds here. We have a land wind or breeze and a sea breeze or sea wind. And the land breeze comes from the land to the sea and the sea breeze comes from the sea to the land. So whatever name is in front of the whatever descriptor is in front of the wind is where it's coming from. Okay, so I hope that helps. So then for instance we're going to have a mountain and a valley breeze and we're going to see that they cycle throughout the course of the day-night sort of thing. The valley breezes come from the valley up the mountain and the mountain breezes come from the mountain down to the valley. Um, Chinook winds, uh, another a synonym for Chinook winds if you're in a different part of the world are the phone winds. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And then we have the catabatic winds, um, kind of cool, uh, very specific for a particular type of geography or topography. Uh, country breezes, um, in all cases, uh, keep in mind we've talked about um, what, why would a wind <laughs> be created in the first place. And wind is basically air that is relocating from a high to a low pressure. So, um, actually this idea of a sea breeze going to the land and a land breeze going out to the sea, we've already talked about that. And I don't know if this rings a bell, but I said that um, in chapter 6 when I talked about the uh, sea breeze, I said it's kind of like a lake breeze. Um, about 3 p.m. if you're in Chicago, you get this sort of breeze off of Lake Michigan into the city. And um, what's happening with the land excuse me, the sea breeze or the land breeze is that um, the we talked about the fact that uh, w large bodies of water like Lake Michigan or the oceans, they are very slow to heat and they are slow to cool. And so it's that temperature difference and the land is, is relatively quick to heat up and cool down. So let's take a look at that and kind of remind you Okay, so let's just kind of focus in on uh, one breeze first. Let's focus in on the sea breeze, or this would be similar to the, the, the breeze you get off of Lake Michigan if you're in Chicago. So, um, so you figure maybe about 3 p.m. or so, what's happened is the sun has been out a lot, and the water is, is uh, slow to, to heat up. Okay, and so since it's slow to heat up, it's relatively cool, and this relatively cool air near the uh, Lake Michigan or near the large body of water, the ocean, this relatively cool water, excuse me, cool air will be nice and dense, and it's nice and dense, and it's a relatively high pressure. And if you compare that to land, what's happened by 3 p.m. is land is fast to heat up relative to the ocean or to Lake Michigan and so it's relatively warm and if I look at a chunk of air over here it's going to have kind of nice and expanded and going to be kind of sparse down there so it's a relatively low pressure so here along the earth's surface then we have a high and a low pressure this is what we call a horizontal a, di oh, a uh, difference in the horizontal pressure so basically you're going to have air wanting to move from this high to this low pressure. And since it's coming from the sea towards the land, we call it a sea breeze. So now compare that scenario to this scenario where um, this is nighttime. Notice the moon, okay? And so what's going to happen? I'll go ahead and put the word slow here. And now slow means that the water is going to cool down more slowly than the land. And so then, you know, I don't know what time, maybe 10 p.m. or so, um, depending upon the time of year, the moon hasn't, I don't know, maybe 2, 2 a.m., okay. But when the moon's out um, and the sun, sun is out of the way and the moon is, well, I guess the moon doesn't have to be there. 
<laughs> anyway, um, during nighttime when the earth is cooling down, the water will be slow to cool down. And so it will retain its heat longer than the land. So if it's warmer, then if we look at a chunk of air over here, it's going to be kind of sparse. Okay, uh, versus we look at a chunk of air over here, this land is cool down, going to cool down more quickly. Okay, and then so that means over here that the particles are nice and closer together. So now we have a high pressure on land and a lower pressure out to sea or out to um, Lake Michigan. So we have what we call an outgoing breeze. Okay, and this is called a land breeze. So the next pair of two pair of local winds that I want to talk about are the valley breeze and the mountain breeze. And again, you know where the wind is coming from by the name in front of the word breeze. So valley breezes come from the valley, um, come from the valley up the mountain, and mountain breezes come down the mountain towards the valley. So here in a minute, you're going to see kind of figures like this, where this is the mountain, there's the valley, and there's the other side of the mountain. So I'll put V there, M M. Okay, so you kind of get a sense for it. And it does have to do with time of day. So what we're going to see is that during the daytime, as the sun heats up, really heats up, um, well, every place, but it heats up the, um, the slope of the mountain more quickly. The air, as you go up in elevation, we know gets thinner, so it'll be more quickly to heat. So warmer air, then we know, will create, just like we saw with the... Um, the uh, the other two uh, local breezes, the sea breeze and the uh, land breeze, the warmer air will have a relatively low pressure and the colder air will have a high pressure. So you'll end up with a valley breeze during the day. At nighttime, as surface temperatures cool off, we're going to see that um, the mountain slopes will cool off more quickly than the valley. So then you basically, along the mountain slopes, you end up creating, since they cool more quickly, they're colder and they create a high pressure along the mountain slopes. So let me show you what that looks like. So for those of you who are uh, filling in the blanks for my PowerPoint slides, I'll give you a minute to go ahead and find what, what word is missing. But um, there's a couple of really good figures here. Um, this figure is showing you the valley breezes. So valley breezes tend to occur during the heat of the day and they are from the valley up the mountain slope. And the reason they are from the valley to the mountain slope must mean that we have a high pressure down here and we have low pressures up here. And the reason we have low pressures up here along the sides is the fact that um, this thinner air up here along the mountain slopes uh, tends to um, heat up more quickly and as it heats up warm air has a lower pressure than high air excuse me warm air has a lower pressure than cold air so that's what we have now as this air moves up uh, with a valley breeze notice then we have air cooler air sinking to replace it um, now one of the things that this rising warm air can do is uh, lift the air along the way. It's, it's actually a, a type of lifting mechanism and we can go ahead and get that chunk of air that it's lifting if uh, to rise to the lifting condensation level. And toila, we have cumulus clouds. So let's compare that to nighttime when um, both our mountain and our valley has had a chance to cool down. but. Um, Notice now here we have a mountain breeze, so it's coming from the slopes of the mountain toward the valley uh, during the evening. And uh, the reason for this is we must have a high pressure up here along the mountain, and we have a relatively low pressure here. And this high pressure up here has occurred along the mountain is because it can cool off more quickly um, because the air is more sparse than down here in the valley. So we basically have converging air down here in the valley. And one of the things about converging air is um, that actually is a type of lifting uh, mechanism in and of itself. So um, there you go. That is a mountain breeze. Now Chinook winds, or if you're in the Alps, um, phone winds, are... Um, are the same, created by the same phenomenon, and they also have to do with a mountain, 
and basically um, they would be on the leeward versus the windward side of the mountain. So if I kind of look at the, um, the mountains um, here on the west coast, uh, one of the things we're going to actually find out in this chapter, if you probably already knew this, but if we have the Pacific Ocean here, um, basically um, our California mountains are under the influence of a prevailing westerly winds. And so this would be the windward side, and this would be the leeward side. Okay, um, And specifically, the Chinook winds are associated with the Rocky Mountains, so the leeward side of the Rocky Mountains. And what happens is basically we have a high pressure on the uh, top of the mountain, and it forces air quickly down the leeward side of the Rockies, and that's called a Chinook. One of the things I think is neat is that the word Chinook is an Indian word for snow eater. So here's one of the things that 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 quickly that air that moves quickly down the Rockies that we call the Chinook um, Chinook winds. Um, they can be very very fast, 90 miles per hour. And the other thing is that as they are forced, as you take a chunk of air and you force it down it is going to get smaller and smaller. And as it gets smaller and smaller, it's going to warm. It's like the opposite of adiabatic cooling. It's adiabatic warming. And so that's why, actually, you can get a crazy change in temperature of this chunk of air that's been forced to go downward. So it warms. It can warm up an awful lot. Another downslope wind but um, this would be on the western slopes of the Rockies. Um, uh, are these, you've probably heard of them before, the Santa Ana winds. And um, they are notorious for occurring in the fall. And what you end up with um, seasonally is, I don't know if you can see this, let me make it a little bit bigger. If you can go ahead and see this uh, surface map, is uh, this high pressure right here can kind of hover again on the western side not so which would be the windward side not the leeward side of the Rockies and it can force um, uh, force air again down and so just like the um, just like the the Chinook winds though that chunk of air that's coming forced to come down will adiabatically warm and if it occurs when the season is already dry um, if you go ahead and just add a spark, some sort of forest fire, um, it's these Santa Ana winds that actually um, have been noted for totally aggravating um, forest fires. So it seems these local winds, now that I think about it, are very specific, aren't they, to um, topography, geography. Um, here's a, a wind called a catabatic wind, and what it needs to occur, and you can see from the slide that uh, good options for it to occur would include um, the plateau-like um, feature of Greenland uh, and Antarctica. But what a plateau is, is basically, um, this is my large body of water, <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, and this up here is my land mass, okay? So that's sort of what we have going to, ca to create these catabatic winds. So basically what happens is you have um, kind of a cycling of weather events, um, but what ultimately is created is a relatively high pressure on top of this plateau. And so um, the way I've read is basically this high pressure then I'm trying to kind of draw a chunk of air that's really kind of dense with particles, with gas particles. It kind of builds up, and at some point, then, it will it will basically fall off the slope down here. And I'm going to put a little L here for low pressure, okay, and to low pressure down here. So it builds up a high pressure on top of the plateau, and then it kind of falls off. And so it's that right here that is your catabatic wind. So that's kind of neat. And the last um, uh, medium, sky, medium size or mesoscale wind I want to talk about is called a country breeze. So country breezes must come from the country to where? The city. So if this is my city, um, basically what I'm, we're describing here, country breeze is like this, where you have 
um, air coming from the country towards the city. And why would that be? Again, it's the theme is from high to low pressure, right? These are all highs out here. And we have what? Converging air here into the city. Okay, and so why would you end up with a relatively low pressure in the city? Well, one of the things I don't think I emphasized what your textbook covered is something called the urban, the urban island heat effect. And the fact that cities, for a number of reasons, generally, even during the night, tend to retain their heat. And if they retain their heat, then they're warm. And one of the things we know about warm air is it tends to have a relatively low pressure. So that relatively low pressure then, um, at nighttime anyway, relative to the countryside, it's going to cool off pretty quickly, then is how come is what creates our country breeze. Now there isn't something called a city breeze necessarily where it reverses itself. But like this slide says, what one of the things or what can happen with this converging air is basically that city has air coming towards it all the time, so it actually um, can can aggravate the pollution situation.